So how can we start a webcam and capture face to detect the mask so that necessary warning message can be displayed and an email is sent to the authorities so that they can take required action on violators of face mask detection alert system that we are building from past two videos. This is the part three of the face mask detection alert system project series. Folks, Nitin here and this is the AI University channel. This is the part three of face mask detection alert system deep learning project series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to load the saved deep learning model we trained earlier, how to use face mask classifier to detect the face so that region of interest can be captured before we detect mask on face. We will also cover Python code related to creating a warning pop-up window that will appear if mask is not detected on face. We will also see how to trigger an email to authorities if the mask is not detected on face. So watch this video till the end. If you are new here then consider subscribing to this channel or if you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. Please show your love and support by liking, sharing and subscribing to this video as I will feel highly motivated. Also we now have the AI University Android app and the website which is in beta mode right now. So let's move on. So first of all, you need to keep the trained model you downloaded in the previous video to the location where all of your Jupyter notebooks are stored in the Windows computer. So let's now see the Python code in the Jupyter notebook. In the first section right here, I'm importing important Keras framework libraries required for loading our deep learning model. NumPy and OpenCV's CB2 library to work with live webcam and images. Then we have tkinter to create a warning pop-up window in order to throw the warning message to the user if he or she is not wearing the mask. Another library called as smtplib is being used to define an SMTP client session object that can be used to send an alert email to concerned authorities if the person detected is not wearing the mask. In the next line, we are initializing the tkinter in order to create a tk root widget which is a window with a little bar and other decoration provided by the window manager. The root widget has to be created before any other widget and there can only be one root widget. Then we are hiding the root window from the screen without destroying it of course uh, using withdraw function. If we don't use this withdraw function then it will cause the app to create a, an empty root window always open which we don't want. You can try playing around it by not including this line root.withdraw to see the results for yourself. In the next line, we are loading our previously trained and saved deep learning classifier. We are using load model method and passing the name of the saved H5 file of trained model, which in our case is face mask detection alert system.h5. In the next line, we are using OpenCV's Har Cascade front face classifier to detect the face in the video frame so that First, we locate the region of interest, which in our case is human face. Once we locate the face, then we can use our deep learning model loaded up to predict if the person is wearing a face mask or not. If you want to know more in detail about a different hard casket classifiers that can not only predict human uh, face, but also vehicles like cars, which has its application self-driving cars, then you can go through this OpenCV crash course series. Link is given in the i button and in the description section. One more thing you need to remember that you need to keep this har cascade frontal face default.xml file at the same location where you are keeping your saved model. Meaning you need to keep the saved model and this XML file in the same direct. In the next line, we are trying to capture uh, the live video feed by making use of OpenCV's video capture method. This will return video from the first webcam on your computer. Please ensure that the argument inside video capture function is zero. Then in the next line, we are defining two dictionaries. First one is text dict that contains details of wearing mask or not wearing a mask. Here zero and one are the keys and mask and no mask are the values associated with these keys. These values will be displayed on the rectangles that we are going to draw around faces. Once these are detected on the webcam. If the person is wearing mask, then the text would be mask on. And if he or she is not wearing the mask, then the text displayed would be no mask on the rectangle 
as we saw in the demo. You can change these values as per your requirement. Then we have Rect Color Dict, which is a dictionary that holds the color of rectangles around the face in webcam. 0 and 1 are the keys and 0, 255, 0 and 00, 255 represents colors on BGR band. If the mask is detected, then the color of the rectangle would be green, which is depicted by 0, 255, 0. And if the mask is not detected, then the color of the rectangle would be red, which is depicted by 0, 0, 255. We are going to use this dictionary later down below in the code. Then in the next line, uh, we are defining the subject and the email body text for our email. In the next set of lines, I'm using while loop to initiate an infinite loop that I'm breaking here by making use of break statement. Inside this while loop, we are defining ret and frame by doing vid underscore source dot read. Vid underscore source is initialized here. Here, ret is a boolean value that tells whether or not any frame is returned from the video feed and frame is a variable that stores a return frame. You will get none value if there is no frame return. In the next line, we are converting the color image feed into grayscale. We are making use of CVT color function here for that purpose. Inside this function, we are passing each frame as an argument along with a parameter called as color underscore BGR to gray. If you want to know more about uh, various ways to convert color image to a gray scale, then you can watch this video, link of which is given in the i button above. The gray scale image is referred by a variable here as gray scale underscore img. Now, in order to get the region of interest in the frame or image, we are using face underscore debt underscore classifiers method called as detect multi scale. It takes several input parameters. Number one is input gray scale image. Number two is scale factor, which depicts parameter is specifying how much the image size is reduced at each image scale. What this mean is by what factor are we increasing or decreasing the pyramid image by. Setting it to 1.3 means that we are reducing the image by 30% each time it is scaled. Number 3 parameter is min neighbors that depicts how many neighbors each candidate rectangle should have to retain. What this mean uh, is that we, if we have uh, multiple faces in the same region, then it may draw multiple rectangles there. So we through this parameter are telling that it should consider it as one face. For example, if you set this as minimum of two faces in the same region, then it will consider it as one face. Lower value will de detect multiple faces over single image. Higher value will ensure less false positives and you may miss some faces. The variable faces stores the value of the complete uh, operation in an array. That is, it stores the information of all the faces it would detect in the image in an array form. So if you print this variable, you will get an array as an output. In the next line, we are just uh, using for loop to iterate through each x, y, w, h values present in the faces variable in order to draw the rectangle around that face. Here w means width and h means height. Inside the for loop, we are cropping the image to limit it to just face and then we are rescaling it to size 112 by 112 in order to match it with the ones we trained our image on. Then I'm normalizing the image by dividing it by number 255 so that my image is in the range. If you want to know uh, why do we crop, normalize or resize an image in computer vision, then you can watch this OpenCV crash course series. Then we are predicting the face mask on the face by making use of predict function associated with our deep learning model that we trained in the previous video and which we loaded here in this video. We are trying to get the label of associated image by making use of argmax function and choosing the axis as 1. Then we are using rectangle function to draw rectangle around the face. x, y, w, h represents the coordinates of the face. Rectangle function is taking four parameters here. Number one is input image. Number two is a starting point of the rectangle, which is x, y. Number three is the ending point of the rectangle to be drawn, which is x plus width and y plus height. Number four parameter is color dictionary, rect color dict, which stores the color of the rectangle on the BGR band. Number five is the thickness of the rectangle line. 
put text function is being used to write a text such as mask on and no mask on the rectangle. If you want to know more about uh, put text function of the OpenCV, then you can watch this video. Link is given in the description section. Then in the next cell, we are using if condition to check if the label of the face detected is one, meaning if the person detected in the webcam is wearing a mask or not. If the label is equals to one, then it means wearing no mask and zero means wearing mask. If he is not wearing the mask, then we are using show warning function associated with the message box class of tkinter. This is being used to throw a warning message to tell user to wear a mask if he or she is not wearing one. This will stay open and no access will be given until they wear any mask. After this, we are sending an email to administrator if access is denied to the person if he or she is not wearing the mask. This will happen in real time. Here, first we are defining the format of message such as subject, which will contain the subject of the email and the text will contain the body of the email. We are using SMTB uh, library for this purpose, uh, which comes as a inbuilt library of the Python installation. You don't have to download it explicitly. You definitely need to have Gmail account to test this functionality. So I have already created separate email account uh, or Gmail account in fact uh, on which I got the email right which you saw in the demo video or the first video. If you remember I showed you how I received an email in the demo right in the first video. Also you need to ensure that you have disabled the two factor verification on the Gmail as well as enabled allow access uh, to less secure app settings otherwise you will receive an error. You can see these two screenshots to understand what am I talking about. I will provide the link of these two places in the description section. So first we are defining the message format shown as combination of both subject and email body text. Then in the next line we are defining the SMTP mail server as smtp.gmail.com and port it is defined as 587. Now you need to identify yourself to the server so to do that you type mail.ehlo next you need to define the transport layer security mode to encrypt any data that follows this command we define that parameter using this line mail.starttls then in the next line we are providing our details such as gmail user id and password mail.login defines that only mail.sendmail command uh, will send the email it contains the arguments such as from email, receiver email and the message to be sent. I provided both from email and receiver email as my Gmail ID only. Please ensure that you are not masquerading anyone as it is illegal. And then you can close the connection using mail.close. If you don't receive an email uh, in your inbox, then you can check the junk folder as well. Then in the next line, uh, cv2.imshow is being used to show the live webcam. The title of this webcam which will be shown on the upper left corner of the webcam window is live video feed and IMG argument shows the frame uh, on the webcam. So cv2.wait key is used here to take uh, the user action to close the webcam window. Here condition key equals to 27 represents that if user presses escape key then window will be closed. Number 27 represents the escape key here. So when we run the cell, webcam will appear, which I showed you uh, in the demo videos. So as you can see here on the demo video, when I uh, run the cell, this particular webcam window will appear, detecting if you're wearing a face mask or not. If you're wearing a mask, then you will get this green rectangle around your face. If not, then uh, a pop-up window will appear giving you a warning message and at the same time an email will be sent to the authorities alerting them that there is a person who is not wearing the mask at the gate. So folks this is it for this video hope you learned something new today. In the next upcoming series I will cover uh, different other uh, such projects in fact the real life projects to show you how to build these amazing AI based applications. So here is today's question. Uh, straight true or false SMTV library comes as a inbuilt library with a python installation please post your answers comments in the comment section given below so that i can get a chance to incorporate your feedback 
you can also post your technical questions in the comment section and i will try to answer the same if you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel consider clicking that little subscribe button in case you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever i will release a new video so thanks for hanging out with me guys i will be covering next topic in the upcoming video so keep on watching thank you